My father was very brave and very smart. And he said to it, we should survive. My grandmother Hilda was put on a pedestal. They called her the beautiful Mrs. Amster. My mother always said, if you have a goal, go for it. My grandfather Kopelkorn was this political powerhouse. He was an honest man, great family man. My grandparents are alive in the names that I've chosen for my children, in the stories that I hear from my parents, and in the traditions I try to keep over. My father was born in Rimanov, Polonia. My mother was born in Bardiov, Slovakia. And I was born in Preshov in Czechoslovakia. We were well off people and we have a very nice home. Saba Menachem always was dedicated to tradition, to religion. I remember going with him to shul. Shabbat was kept, kashrut was in the house. He was always a good father, good friend. We always look at him and we're hoping to be like him. Usually people say you have to be born with this Bissele Mazel. Wherever he went, whatever he did, he was a lucky man. My grandmother Hilda was a very good mother, wonderful wife, all the qualities of a good Jewish woman. I always remember and always when I think about it, why she was taken away so young. And I always remember her telling when I was born, I was her Kaddish. My father was born in Poland and my mother in Lithuania. I was born in Palestine. My father was my teacher, my friend, always cheerful. I loved him. Saba Kopokorin was a man of integrity, a very honest person. I think he valued being proud of being Jewish. He was very involved in defending Israel. I was around 16. Unfortunately, he died at a very young age. I miss my father very much, and I have a happiness in my life. My mother was a very strong woman from a religious home. She was a beautiful lady and very smart. Yona Corin was a very well-known person in the neighborhood like uh, nobility. She was a wonderful mother, hard-working person. She went through hardship in her life. She loved my father very much. And we were a very happy family. I miss her a lot. My father's grain business, which was a vital for the economy of Slovakia, mostly corn and wheat. Around 39, 40, the Germans came into the town. Every Jewish person had to have a yellow band on the left arm. Later on, we had a Jewish yellow star. They have to give up their businesses. That's what happened to my father. We saw our friends taken away. When my father realized what's going on, he obviously wanted to save the family. Saba Menachem had some kind of high status. And he has some connection by the authorities and he get papers. Vinimka. We had yellow papers and white papers. These yellow papers had allow them to continue working, offer them the income, and spare them of some of the horrors of the Holocaust. My father did everything what he could. We shouldn't fall into no German hands, no Slovak hands, or in a ghetto. He kept us out of all sorts of problems for a while.
it's already rumor. It was uh, hate against the Jews. My parents felt that Palestine was the safest place. My father came to Israel in 1929. My mother went to Israel in 1937. They picked themselves up from Europe before the state was created and they moved to a land because they believed in it. And that's how they met. They fell in love and they got married. My father was part of the fifth Aliyah. The original pioneers who built the land. Young Jewish people boosted up all the defense in Israel. Ms. Saba Kapokorn was, was a great person. He, he gave up a lot of things to, to go to Israel and make Aliyah. My Safdiyuna was a very driven lady. She was very motivated. She had a lot of challenges in her life. My mother used to tell me stories. She cherished her family in Ponyvish. My mother's family were all killed in 1941 by the Lithuanian. In Ponyvish, they were shot in one big hole. She was able to persevere through poverty, through sickness, through hardship. Even to her last days, she was fighting, she was strong, and an amazing woman that I look up to. In 1944, information came in that the Germans are coming to the city. And we had to move up in the mountains. I remember we slept all night under the trees. They covered me with a blanket. The blanket was soaking wet and cold, miserable. We didn't know where to go, how we're going to survive. And we started to walk behind my father, walking, walking in deep forest, big mountains. Miserable, cold, still raining. I hear the conversation within the adults. Mendel, Yossel, where are we going? The guide, the guide in Yiddish. And suddenly we saw the group of Jews. Part of the Jews were from our city, from our town. Our, our shoichet was there. They knew being together was definitely going to seal their fate. And they said, we got to separate. It's too many people, it's too dangerous. If they catch us, we'll be all finished. Our group and family will go to left side, and new group and families were going to the right side. It was the fate of God that my father and his family survived, and unfortunately the other group did not. They were all slaughtered, laying dead in that forest. And my father and my grandfather and the whole group, they did their mitzvah of burying them. They said their Kaddish for them. There were Nazis, uh, fascists, Slovaks, and they were worse than Germans. They did not take nobody. They executed all the Jews on the spot. My father described living in these bunkers, or these little caves that were in these mountains. It was so calculated when they could even burn the fire for warmth. During the snow, they had to take a branch and always flatten out, so there was no trace of any footsteps. One day, my brother and the other boy, they were eight-year-old, they disappeared. They went down in the village and would beg for whatever food that they could get. I am from a burnout village. Do you have a bread or something? In the meantime, he inquired, when are the Germans coming? What's going on in the village? We got the information, and finally we came back home to the bunker. And our parents screaming at us, you're going to bring the Germans after you, the Germans, they will kill all of us. But when we saw them, the bread, and the information we got from the village, suddenly everything was quiet. Because this was the lifeline to future, to food and information of what's going on in the world. My father, every morning, came out from under the ground, under the bunker, and put his talit and tefillah and prayed. He understood what the danger was involved. With the bitter cold and snow around him, but he would never skip a day. My father told us, if we will stay together, we will be fine. We will see children, we will survive. And we did. We were liberated in March of 1945. And uh, a new 
life started for us. Talma's parents came young Halutzim to Israel. They left the beautiful homes back in Europe. It was hard. Life was hard. It was building Israel. It was a miserable life. And suffered malaria, living in the tents uh, with no water, uh, and working to survive. The times were so difficult and trying, and yet they just kept persevering. In a new place, unknown place, hard place, they are the true Zionists. Copper Korn was a very powerful man in his Tadrut. He was a great negotiator. He was a great judge. He's always at the podium, always lecturing, always encouraging, seems like a real charismatic figure. I usually remember him sitting on the platform and making the speeches in our hometown. He was a big advocate for youth, education for the youth. One of my father's dream was to build a trade school for the youth to have a profession in life. My father was a very busy man involved in defending Israel. Who interfaced with Golda Meir. Which at the time I didn't realize that they are so important. My Safta Yona Koren was a woman who had a purpose, a goal, and she went right to it. My Safta Yona was all love. You saw it in her writing, you saw it in her stitching, and you saw it in her looks. She lost her husband in young age, and that was very hard. She learned from her mother. That's life. You have to pick up the pieces and go from there. When I got married, she lived with us. She had the schut to see her granddaughter getting married and to see some of her great-grandchildren. We were so fortunate to have those years that she lived with us. But you really saw the hard work. You saw the trembling hands. My Saba, Kopokorn, and my Safta Yona, I really admire them. My parents raised us with honesty, dignity, and love for Israel. After we came home to Preshov, A new era started in Zionistic movement. I joined one of those groups. We were talking about Palestine. That's the place we have to build our life. I informed my father and my uncle that I am going to a Zionistic organization. It's called Aliyah Tanur, which means taking the youth and making Aliyah moving to Israel. In a way, it was happiness, and in a way, it was sad. I was then almost 13 years old. They made me a little bar mitzvah there. But still we kept Yiddishkeit that he was 13, and after the bar mitzvah, he left. My uncle and my father, they took me to the train to Prague. And from then on, I was on my own. In South France, all those children were collected. Most of the children were survival without parents. We are loaded on the boat, uh, smuggled us uh, from the British blockade. It was long, it was hot, it was not very comfortable conditions. It was all about survival. In 1947, I saw the lights of Haifa and the Madrid told us, this is Eretz Israel. I was so proud that we are starting a new life in Eretz Israel. My sisters uh, from Europe came to Eretz Israel. I stayed with Agi and went to uh, trade school. He was growing up. He studied in Petah Tikva, and my father gave him the diploma. My future father-in-law, Mr. Corin, I remember I got a diploma from him. He shook my hands and went to Air Force. Talma 
was a neighbor from my father in Israel. And my brother was going out with a very, very nice girl. But my father had, had an eye on Talma. He loved pretty ladies. My Saba Menachem was like a little Shatlan. He introduced my father to my mother. He tells me, hey, listen, young man, every morning I can see a beautiful girl. She's a soldier. And I really realized that he's a beautiful, wonderful girl. And I decided I'm going to marry her if she agreed. All of a sudden, I meet Ernie. And on the first date, guess what? He tells me I'm going to marry you. I said, oh, no way. He convinced me he is some kind of a charmer. And I fell for it. And that's what he was waiting for. He was trouble, and she liked that. The Sefer Torah means to us that it is honoring our parents, honoring Talma's parents. I'm really proud of my grandparents for donating the Torah. I feel this is the core of who they really are. Um, it's a huge mitzvah. It will give me memories of, of them and my great-grandparents. I'm very proud of my Saba and Safta that they dedicated a Sefer Torah. To see that our grandchildren we will always continue in the Masoret for the future, to be a good Jewish people, honest people, and always remember them. My father said, I want my oldest grandson to be the first to learn from this Torah. It's his Bar Mitzvah. Menachem is the namesake of the two grandparents. He's going to keep Torah alive in our family and the values and the tradition. I feel very proud to have learned from the Sefer Torah for the first time that was named after my two great-grandfathers. For me, it brings back some beautiful memories of them, which I think I've kept tucked inside for a very long time. When I see the Sefer Torah, all the history and memories coming alive to me. I look at my Saba couple and my Safta Yona, and I think of hardship, and I think of hard times. If they could do it, give me the strength to do it. And that's the value I get from them. The values I would like to pass on to the next generation are very much the ones that I take with me from my parents' home, that the family should keep together. I think a lot of the values that my Abba and Ima were able to pick up from their parents, they're able to now pass it on to my kids. I'm really proud of my heritage and I can't wait to follow my grandparents' and great-grandparents' footsteps. And I tell them, I say, look at these pictures, look where you came from. I named after my Safta Yona. I never met her, but I still love her. My grandparents always live life to their fullest. They make the most of each day and they are tremendous role models that I look up to. And I just want to keep that passion alive. I want to keep that desire to live, to love, and to be proud to be Jewish. I think it is very important to respect and appreciate our heritage. I would like to carry on or give over to my children, and uh, it's who I am today. It's because of them. I think my grandparents would look down and see what we're doing today, be so proud of us. They would see that we're all together, how happy we are, keeping Torah alive, the value, the tradition alive, and they'll say, we did it, we're together. <laughs>